Thanks. Sir. Yeah. Thanks. So good evening, everyone. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, depend upon your location. So welcome to this uh, uh, IDP Climate Studies Seminar Series. Today we have Dr. Navnita Bora, who is a science communicator and researcher. So she will be giving her second talk on how to communicate the science using performatory arts. So Dr. Navnita Bora is a science communicator and researcher. She holds a PhD in atmosphere space sciences from Indian Institute of Tropical Meteorology. Intrigued by the gap between this and the user, science communication information to non experts. To her, Dr. Bora has made two short films focusing on communicating climate change information using folk art. She also runs two awareness com communication camps. Health with misinformation and about sexual harassment and sexual education extensively using social media platforms. In addition, her field of interest includes gender based issues and intersectionality. She also volunteers as a mental health advocate. So, today, Dr. Bora is going to give a talk on uh, communicating science through performatory arts, and we have total. Uh, 170 registrations as of now and 90 register 90 percent of the registrations is from india and but we have uh, registrations from nepal australia ghana pakistan usa switzerland south korea nigeria kenya liberia and nigeria also and uh, we have also people from industry academia as well as self-employed uh, nature also and uh, we have registrations from uh, what you can say all kind of universities iits uh, state government universities and foreign universities. Now, with this brief introduction to Dr. Nagnita Bora, so I will request her to uh, start the seminar. So, uh, Dr. Bora, thanks for accepting us and uh, you please proceed. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Raj, for uh, this nice introduction. Well, uh, and. Uh, uh, And uh, just okay. Thank you, uh, Climate Studies Group IIT Bombay, for giving me this opportunity. And thank you, uh, hello everyone, and thank you for being here uh, to listen to me about communicating climate, uh, sci communicating science through performative art. Uh, so communicating science. Through performative art, through artistic approaches, is not an actually new process, and so uh, yeah, it's not a new process. And uh, uh, but in the recent times, uh, experts uh, is trying to explore uh, uh, you know this dimension uh, more extensively, considering the artistic uh, benefits of artistic approaches and. Uh, I would focus uh, two studies here and uh, the, the recent studies by Lesson and uh, by Klogner and Sommer. And uh, these researchers, they, had, they, they did what they uh, categorized around 200 uh, artistic approaches, science art based approaches. And then they wanted to see actually their uh, the those uh, pro, uh, I mean projects focus uh, uh, the kind of subjects they are focusing and the kind of audience they are focusing mostly, and they found that most of the projects are mainly towards environmental science and then uh, followed by the climate change. This is a very hopeful, uh, you know, useful uh, information for us because uh, we know how important climate change is and how important climate change communication uh, is towards common people. And also uh, in this picture, you know, uh, though uh, most of the uh, artworks, science art, merged artworks are mostly exhibitions or installations, uh, et cetera, but uh, the research-based works are, the research-based works are also emerging and that's a very useful, uh, you know, very uh, hopeful thing. And also they have found that uh, most of the artworks are uh, like uh, targeting the general uh, public and uh, 
And they also found that uh, the research, the works uh, which are uh, uh, targeting the research audience is coming in the third place. So this is another study. This is a very interesting study because they had studied uh, the psychological impact of artworks uh, on uh, common public. Uh, they, what they did, they, uh, uh, oh, I'm sorry, this study uh, basically based on only US, the, all the 200 art uh, science-based projects they collected was from US. And I would have loved to show something with respect to India, but as of now, I couldn't find any systematic study which could like you see similar kind of statistics. This is another study. Uh, uh, yeah, this is very important because they had uh, an interesting as well because they have you know studied the psychological impact of artwork. What they did, they uh, collected uh, all the 37 uh, artworks that was presented during Paris Climate Summit in 2015. And they had interviewed around 800 plus the viewers and they had uh, used this methodolo methodology to see uh, how these those artworks were actually impacting and motivating the viewers and uh, in different way considering uh, the forms of artworks uh, you know the settings the materials the styles they used and also the viewers uh, you know socio demographic uh, ex uh, backgrounds and art expertise and everything, and how basically those artworks uh, motivated those viewers uh, towards uh, the climate change policies to support positively, uh, I mean, ne or negatively towards climate change po policies. And the good uh, thing is that this research has found that uh, no matter what kind of emotional response the viewers had experienced, but the ultimate uh, you know, uh, impact uh, towards the climate change policy was always a positive uh, feedback. So uh, they also claim that this is the first of its kind uh, study uh, that getting uh, uh, get to know the psychological impact. And again, I, I couldn't see any similar kind of study uh, compared to uh, uh, India. So yeah, so considering all these factors, you know, uh, uh, though there are different approaches available to communicate science or uh, communicate, uh, uh, climate change, uh, that complex subjects like climate change. But I think uh, this is uh, uh, using artistic approaches could be very useful. And these are some, uh, these are, these three are uh, very known uh, uh, the collaborative projects uh, that art science collaborative projects. And uh, uh, we can see how different forms, like this is a visual artwork where they use, they try to say how fossil fuel can be harmful for the living being or for environment as a whole. These two are actually included in the psychological study I had already uh, mentioned in the previous slide. And this is a participatory uh, artwork where they try to uh, create a global, uh, you know, uh, a city, a global group where everybody will come forward to combat climate change. And then uh, this, this artwork is a performance-based artwork where they actually uh, uh, took the climate change data from Monas University and then, uh, you know, reworked uh, the, the famous Four Seasons uh, piece of art and then uh, uh, re, uh, re uh, I mean, modified to uh, as the uncertain, the uncertain four seasons. So this, uh, uh, all three are known, and uh, we have seen three different art forms: the participatory form, and then the visual artwork, and then performance based. And how, uh, how, uh, 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 like uh, through different media, uh, through different uh, uh, approaches, they are trying to, you know, convey the similar messages that are trying to convey the. Uh, the uh, scientific information. So, and this is uh, from India, uh, IIC Bangalore, the art and science project, where they used a folk art to convey, you know, uh, 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 the different science elements. So, their climate change was uh, also one of them. They took one paper, I forgot probably Professor Govinda Swami's paper, and then they uh, summarized it through a folk art. Uh, so here, what we have seen, we have seen that all these projects 
happen through collaboration. There are different stakeholders. Climate scientists are there, climate psychologists are there, social psychologists are there, social scientists are there, artists are there, and then of course audiences audiences are there. And uh, what happened? Uh, so all those stakeholders say, say they work together, they work uh, together, they come to a conclusion, they form, they they create the art. Uh, uh, art, uh, art piece for the communication. The stronger the commun uh, collaboration, so uh, I would say the stronger the collaboration would be before with different stakeholders, the more efficient the communication would be. So, uh, so uh, in the previous lecture, I had already mentioned that we really need to know. Th this is this is one of the main reasons that we really need to know our audience. So, so who is our audience? What is their uh, emotional demand or emotional need. What is their pre-existing belief? So, uh, when uh, uh, in our experiment, when we tried to communicate climate change through performative art, then we went to a village, a remote village in Assam, and then we targeted a community whose traditional or cultural beliefs were very strong. So this picture actually I normally use to uh, represent a community whose cultural and traditional beliefs are strong. And in that case, we use uh, traditional folk theater so that we can reach out to the community uh, easily. So uh, I don't I don't want to add, describe this picture uh, in elaborately, but whoever from such a community would know that uh, this picture, even though it looks maybe very simple and easy, but it has a lot of different element, like both traditional and cultural, religious, everything, all different kind of elements. So, so considering uh, the artistic benefits of artistic initiatives, that uh, which I, we can summarize is that uh, artistic initiatives are um, they have more freedom to express themselves or they give audience to space to understand the problem to express themselves there is no like a, that's not unidirectional right like any scientific uh, technical scientific report so uh, what happened also uh, artistic initiatives say they use different metaphors so that we can use uh, we can you know uh, connect uh, some uh, through those uh, uh, you can connect the uh, those, uh, you know, the message conveyed by those artistic initiatives to our, uh, uh, to our personal narratives is true through the storytelling that they are, uh, they are conveying. So, uh, that which then again, uh, uh, helps to establish the emotional connection. And uh, this will give us the freedom to understand the problem uh, more uh, easily or and efficiently and the cognitive gap that is present in a group then which can be over and in that scenario the cognitive gap present in uh, such a community can be overcome pretty quickly or easily so uh, and when it comes to performative art forms so, so this type of art forms we know very attractive to look at people may uh, you know uh, through participation they will actively get involved with our form they will uh, see uh, they will get to know the stage they will get to uh, you know uh, uh, realize realize uh, the art uh, the what the artists are trying to say and uh, the, that way, this kind of performative artistic initiatives uh, uh, proves to be a useful tool for communicating complex information like climate change. And uh, for a heterogeneous community uh, by taking care of the cognitive gap and all, and uh, this will help the longer lasting gain among the audience and it will, it will uh, in return will increase the science literacy. So uh, then, uh, as I as I said already, that when we go to, went to the village, then our community was traditionally uh, and culturally very strong, and they were like kind of you know uh, uh, scientifically uh, not much exposed to scientific information. So we used a folk art, and we know that how folk culture uh, actually related to our lives, the everyday life. Uh, uh, how we evolve, how how our lives are evolved and revolved around uh, some such folk cultures. So uh, such kind of uh, folk cultures, uh, uh, basically, since uh, 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 
people are used to such kind of folk culture. So when we go to such community, we present our information through such a folk art. So basically they will not, uh, there is a possibility that they will not consider us as outliers. So uh, because uh, they know the art form, they know the contents that they are the performers, uh, the, uh, the uh, uh, is gonna present through the folk art. So the audience will not uh, you know, consider the information or the information providers as the foreign element and they will uh, put more attention towards uh, such kind of uh, art forms and through these art forms to the information. So uh, but these are the very uh, like, uh, you know, uh, uh, characteristics, prominent characteristics of folk art forms that it bridges the cognition with uh, emotion, then uh, yeah, it gives more retention to the public than easy to understand. And then it is also connected to the local culture. So uh, this is, uh, these are the two uh, you know, folk art form from Assam, one Dulia Bauna and Nagaranam. And it is uh, presented, uh, it was presented in a uh, village function among the audience, and this was presented in a household function. But, uh, you know, uh, it's always happened without a uh, stage, proper stage among the audience and through interaction with the audience. Uh, so when we went to the village to communicate our knowledge, so we uh, we had this background study uh, on based on like what kind of a folk art we should use, and then we come to a conclusion that we would use Ojapali. Now, what is Ojapali? Uh, so Ojapali folk art form, uh, the these are uh, like very uh, important characteristics because it's a very energetic and engaging. And most importantly, it contains all the theatrical elements. Uh, like it, it has song, they sing, they dance, they have mudras, they act, and they have dialogues, which is again a real uh, important component uh, while uh, which, uh, for to interact with the audience. And also, it doesn't require any conventional stage, and uh, their dresses also doesn't require any like sophisticated uh, dress code. So it's a very low cost mode of uh, communication. So uh, what is Ujapali? Then Ujapali is a five team performer. Uh, 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 they, they have five performers, a team of five performers. They have these lead performer as a oja and then uh, this uh, assistant performer as a dynapali so what they did the lead performer they take the audience uh, through uh, you know, through my mythology they will use some mythological uh, stories uh, to narrate uh, you know uh, the whole uh, uh, act and then uh, they will use a different uh, satire, different humors, and then the, the dynapali will, uh, you know, that assistant will help the uh, uh, lead performer through, uh, you know, uh, the discussion or questioning, like uh, why it's happening, what should happen, the ideal case, why why people should not do this, and all those things. So this, uh, uh, they will have the discussion and uh, uh, they will uh, take the audience uh, through their narrative and then other three performers will help them with uh, songs and dance and uh, uh, mudras but they will not take in the part they, they will not take part in the discussion so what happened uh, this uh, ojapali uh, actually uh, been already used by different government and non government uh, uh, ngo agencies non government agencies for to spread different kind of awareness among the public and uh, 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 especially for health uh, health awareness uh, or you know agriculture related information they use this uh, ojap this uh, folk art form and uh, a good thing is that it actually the use actually goes back to the uh, non cooperation movement in india as well so and also one well, another good thing i had observed for this uh, particular uh, folk art form is that uh, they can cook up stories uh, instantaneously they will uh, observe they while they they, they will, will keep performing they will keep observing the audience and they will 
if they notice something uh, prominent, they will uh, bring the topic, bring the person to the discussion, and then uh, like uh, they will mock the person, they will use some humor, or they will even cook up some stories, uh, you know, uh, to engage uh, the people there. So, uh, so this is our uh, preliminary uh, study. Uh, as a prelim, uh, we 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 had done this preliminary assessment uh, uh, to check whether we can use Ojapali as a medium of uh, you know scientific communication for scientific uh, information, and. Uh, Uh, okay. Uh, I, I don't know how to. Okay, anyways, so this was a video basically we uh, made, uh, you know, we, we went to, uh, basically we, we uh, did all these uh, things uh, remotely uh in a village uh, in assam and we used uh, we uh, mm, collaborated with the uh, performers but there were five performers and then uh, we so uh, there were five performers we collaborated with them we gave them some kind of scientific contents and we uh, uh, wanted to see whether they are actually uh, grasp the whole idea or not or and uh, uh, whether they could convert the whole contents uh, or not and uh, we uh, to our glad that, uh, that yes they could do there were some mis uh, uh, communication there were some hurdle were there because it was like kind of translating for the, there were two types of translation was involved first to english to uh, the vernacular uh, in uh, assamese and then assamese to the ozapali lyrics so yes it was tough but we could see the feasibility of uh, that we we can use ozapali as a medium and then in the next but we didn't involve any other stakeholders except the performers then in the next next uh, you know uh, mm, Project. Next step of the project, we started it as a pilot project with this particular goals. Then this time we involved two type of targeted audience. One is uh, the performers and then, then the high school students of uh, ninth grade. So we wanted to see uh, whether uh, these high school students could, uh, you know, uh, their reaction, their uh, acceptance. Uh, uh, towards both uh, towards uh, the folk art as well as uh, uh, towards the content, uh, whether they can understand, they can follow, etc. And we use uh, two different kind of contents. Uh, uh, the motive was to see uh, whether uh, uh, the target audience uh, 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 how how they can uh, uh, actually react towards some information which is happening remotely somewhere because most of the target audience in our experiment probably never have uh, never had traveled beyond like 100 kilometers uh, yeah so uh, uh, probably some of them most of the time in the village itself so we wanted to see if wanted to see if we say about uh, sea level rise is happening somewhere else because this is important for assam so we wanted to see how they are going to react to this and we wanted this uh, uh, we, we use this uh, information about uh, change in rainfall and temperature and uh, we wanted to see how they are uh, reacting to uh, information which they can actually experiencing in our in their daily life so uh, uh, the whole experiment was carried out between february and uh, march 2019 i was in the ground for probably for nine days and uh, this was the whole rough idea of the of our experiment where uh, you know we uh, you we did pre uh, and post performance uh, assessment uh, uh, both for the uh, performers 
and the students to see what kind of misconception they poses, what kind of uh, you know pre-existing ideas they have, whether uh, they even hear the word climate change or not, etc. And uh, then we had a workshop with a, a non-expert. When I say non-experts, it included um, uh, the performers and the other team members, the folk folklorist or visual artist or the theater expert, uh, uh, they took part in my team. So we had these uh, uh, workshops with them and then uh, it involved the translation uh, like the previous, uh, uh, previous uh, uh, step initial step like translation of the scientific content to the assamese content and then assamese content to the ojapali lyrics and then this uh, again involved the translated assamese content con uh, uh, had to be conveyed to the performers first i did that and then uh, <laughs> then i did i did convey the similar message uh, the same messages to the uh, folk artist and the visual artist as well and again, the Ujapali uh, performers, they uh, discussed with the folklorist and the uh, theater artist. And then there is a like lot of, you know, back and forth, back and forth uh, uh, discussion uh, uh, was going on. And then they also, uh, they, then they prepared the Ujapali lyrics, it got reviewed and uh, then again, uh, they they, they uh, curated the uh, uh, mudras and all, and th those again got reviewed by the folklorist. And then finally, when the piece was ready, we uh, uh, performed it in front of the students. So, uh, but the students didn't take part in this uh, workshop. So they uh, just uh, took part in the pre-performance assessment, and then they came for the uh, performance by the or trained performers, and then both uh, there there was a, again post performance assessment with uh, of, uh, with the students and the uh, Ojapali performers. Uh, so these are the some snaps. This was the first day. This was actually uh, the first day when we arrived in the village. There was an Ojapali performance going on with the performers in a village house. And they allowed us to, uh, us to uh, visit them, shoot the whole process. So this is how Ujapali actually uh, performed uh, in uh, in a village setup. And uh, this was uh, the uh, day I took the pre-performance assessment. We uh, constructed some questionnaire. We uh, did some survey, uh, like uh, question uh, interviewing them from the questionnaire. And, and uh, this was the post performance interview uh, at the day one and the day nine. And I could say there is a lot of uh, change. I mean, uh, uh, when I was there day one, they definitely welcomed us, but there was like a lot of hesitation and uh, a lot of, uh, 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 yeah, hesitation mostly to share their knowledge with the thinking that probably they do not know something. But the truth after the workshops and the performance, performance then uh, the day nine when we sit together, then there is a like, lot of change in their be, uh, like attitude. They, uh, they were more open. They, they say that they're glad that they could, could took part in this process because most of them are farmers and then uh, they say that yes, uh, it was really helpful to understand some kind of information, and they wanted to, uh, you know, take part uh, uh, in some in some similar programs uh, more often. And uh, this was uh, the activities with the students uh, here. Uh, you know, uh, this is the pre-performance test with the students, and uh, this was the post-performance test. Post-performance test was done with the students in two parts. One right after the performance to see their immediate reaction and then one uh, the next day, following day, to see their, uh, like, uh, if uh, uh, there's still, you know, uh, uh, any impact left from the previous day. And then uh, before going to this pre-performance uh, uh, survey with the students, we did uh, different ice breaking sessions to earn trust from the students because otherwise they would uh, 
their attitude was like somebody is coming from outside and uh, it was difficult for me because I was that time at Abu Dhabi. So they, they came to know, know from their teachers and uh, that someone is coming from outside India and then, uh, you know, they, their uh, whole attitude was a bit different. But through this uh, ice breaking, we played this game, who am I? And then they, we, uh, uh, uh encouraged them the, the, the another game like to ask me different questions so those through these the different games we uh, ice breaking sessions we uh, like uh, really got along uh, with the students and this was like a really great time and uh, uh, this was uh, the team members this was the expert team members he was the folklorist this is a phd in folklore and uh, he was the visual artist and uh, he is the uh, researcher and a practitioner of art history Hamutra Kajal and he is Hare Krishna Talukar uh, is a visual artist then uh, these these uh, were my performers uh, this uh, this session was really difficult because uh, though I explained the things uh, as much possibly uh, uh, I try to make it simple, but yet, you know, making uh, uh, them understand the sea level rise or uh, the impact in their life or why the, uh, you know, uh, the change in temperature or rainfall that it is not like a temporary thing. So all those information is not, uh, was easy. Then uh, the folklorist and then uh, this expert, these two experts helped me a lot uh, to convert uh, my message again to the language they can, the, those performers could understand. Then he was the cognitive scientist from Mias Bangalore as a part of the team. And we also interviewed one prominent uh, personality from the village to know, understand the demographic uh, uh, uh background of the performers and the village and the student as well uh then we had one uh scientist uh, as well on board and then we took his overview of uh, like uh, whether we were going in the right direction or not and uh then at the end of everything uh uh, like uh, after the post performance session with the students, uh, the perf performance, post performance, the scientist feedback. We, I, I presented some graphical representation, scientific graphical representation, and I showed them that basically these two, these two pictures I wanted to uh, convey, uh, disseminate to you. And uh, how do you feel about that? And the response was really good because they say that yes it was much easier when actually performers were, say, were saying the same thing. Uh, <clears throat> I, uh, don't know why I, so, okay, uh, but yeah, this, I, 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 expect to this video to play basically but anyways so Is the video not playing Abhinata? no actually shall i stop sharing and then try again yeah let's do that that way also it works no okay i i did <laughs> the way we tried yesterday Mm. But somehow it's not. So he was the. So sorry. 
So yeah, uh, anyway, uh, let's not play this. So he was the main performer here, uh, the lead performer, the Oja, and he was the assistant. So they were having the conversation that how Himalayan glaciers uh, will melt and then since the Brahmaputra is uh, coming uh, and uh, flowing through Assam uh, and how we can be affected. So they were talking about the flood and how we may get impacted uh, the flood if the glaciers uh, will melt in the future and uh, uh, these were some elements uh, uh, we normally used in some other occasions but we improvised with this kind of uh, you know uh, uh, paintings and uh, these were some other paintings uh, I, I forgot the uh, actual the colloquial term used for this. These are some kind of elements that are normally used by visual artists to display uh, the uh, uh, and uh, so the context of the program. And uh, we uh, did uh, uh, we uh, we asked the students to paint some whatever they know about the climate change, and they painted some things, and we uh, we uh, used this as a uh, display in the uh, venue. So these were uh, my performers. This was uh, from the initial performance where we did uh, the preliminary assessment. And uh, these uh, are where the, from the pilot project, we tried to do in the same village, but we couldn't manage any school at the time, uh, considering uh, the exam time and all the logistics. So uh, except uh, uh, him, he is a, a very known, uh, you know, Ojapali performer and already perform in many national stages but others are uh, their mo main occupation is either small scale businesses or uh, agriculture mostly agriculture and their educational background uh, is a not uh, is a very little educational background and mostly do not have a scientific uh, exposures so both the videos are available in YouTube. We uh, uh, this is a short film, and we made this as a full uh, docu documentary film, and we document the whole process, the whole nine day process, and we uh, made the whole film so that we can figure out where were the problems, uh, and uh, what is their uh, you know uh, behavior, what is uh, is there any change in behavior, uh, both in. Uh, uh, at the day between the day one and uh, at the uh, at day nine, and uh, these were the performers to overview. We came to know that they were not aware of the term climate change and confuses it with the seasonal changes. They were expecting that okay, this is now happening. This is a momentary thing and about I mean bad time, but uh, uh, we'll get uh, back to the some years are bad and some years are good they are thinking like that then and they thought that main source of information was a school curriculum tv newspaper or radio but the scientists are not talking to them directly or there is no like you know uh, direct communication with uh, peer resources then uh, they think that these whatever the changes are happening are very natural that we uh, and related to seasonal changes uh, as it's mentioned here and uh, they are uh, confused most importantly they confuse whatever is uh, whatever was uh, telling that uh, whatever is changing and uh, they are confusing those kind of changes with other socio socioeconomic changes as well uh, like uh, it's a kind of bit of confused situation in their understanding and then most important uh, uh, point, the last two points is that they uh, started noticing that there exists some, uh, you know, uh, cl uh, climate change, there exists the term climate change of uh, after becoming a part of uh, our team and then whatever they are thinking that is a part of the seasonal change is not the similar thing, whatever we are telling. And uh, as I already told you that uh, uh, at the last day, they expressed their happiness that uh, uh, they, they were very happy to be a part of uh, this uh, uh, approach because they said that uh, they understood, they learned a lot and they are looking for, for future similar programs.
Uh, and the students uh, overview was that uh, it was mostly similar with the performers uh, that they confused the climate change with the seasonal changes. And the most important point is that uh, they, uh, nowadays they have a chapter uh, or a course on climate change, but yet they are very confusing between the two terms. And they have the similar source of information that curriculum, TV, newspaper, radio, but uh, not like a scientist went there, talk to them directly like uh, we did. And then re regarding the folk art form, usually uh, they uh, obviously, uh, I mean, uh, they had a very mixed response before uh, the pre-performance uh, questionnaire when they fill it up, they were uh, like, uh, you know, some expressed that they know Japali, they uh, were very few were looking forward to, you know, uh, uh, see it, but uh, after the performance, uh, they say that they're really excited and because uh, now they can understand uh, pretty quickly and they requested us actually if they can, uh, if we can make some more performance, similar performance with uh, the subjects uh, like, you know, maths, uh, like uh, other uh, science, uh, like physics, chemistry, or all. So it was a very, uh, you know, hopeful thing for us because we didn't expect that they would request us to make some uh, more performance, similar performances. And uh, it was uh, it was the whole team with the students, performers. Uh, I don't know the school staff were there. No, they were not there. So uh, my volunteers and then uh, the team uh, movie <laughs> crew. And yeah, the the whole team was present in the picture. And uh, then what we learned from here. So, so these four points, this uh, 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 to summarize uh, what we have learned in those nine days. And uh, uh, we learned that there are confusion exists between climate change and season changes, even though uh, uh, we talk like there are so many, uh, you know, uh, uh, information are available probably over TV or over newspaper or something, but yet they are very confusing. And then uh, they have this misconception that climate change uh, is reversible. Then uh, we also learned that uh, uh, we earlier taught that uh, uh, translating science into folk art form. Basically, I would say there would be one more step that for into vernacular medium and then folk art form. I thought it would be a bit easy, but it is not because it's it involves a lot of work, getting the proper word uh, in the vernacular medium, then getting the proper word with proper emotion proper intensity probably there may not be some word exist in the uh, in the vernacular medium so it's a, it's a very difficult and then uh, once the ojapali lyrics uh, got uh, you know uh, written and then those ojapali lyrics uh, to uh, keep it simple as well as not oversimplify to keep the connection with the actual content yes it was not easy but I must say it was effective. And uh, yeah, as uh, we, I already had uh, mentioned many times that people appreciated the scientific information about this. So one most, uh, one more, uh, another important point I want to mention here that uh, though, though, uh, mm, you know, uh, these people, these people can be, uh, since, a lot of misconceptions are there and they have lots of confusions even though there is no science deniers or probably climate change deniers in our community but they can uh, be the possible probable victim because uh, you know if uh, they do not get exposure with scientific contents and uh, proper scientific contents and if the confusion or misconception uh, do exist, keep exist, uh, I mean, uh, among them. So probably uh, in this uh, uh, time when there's like a lot of misconceptions uh, or sorry, misinformation are floating around. So uh, there, is a, there is a high possibility that uh, they can become, uh, uh, they can fall for this trap pretty quickly. And uh, uh, yeah, then, uh, 
we produced this artwork we fused uh, we made a fusion artwork of these two uh, uh, focus this this video actually our preliminary uh, uh, study when we uh, didn't involve any other stakeholders but only the performers so we made this a short video and then we combined this video with a pipe girl scroll painting from Jerkhan and then uh, uh, we uh, made a video and then we uh, sub uh, submitted it to World Bank they uh, <laughs> asked for our artwork project as a as a as an initiative and this uh, artwork is available in their uh, you know, art gallery so you can visit there and another encouraging news us uh, news for us is that the same video this introspection video was produced by as an audio visual resource to SCRT by Assam government as a part of this project under uh, uh, and then I think uh, they will uh, upload this video to their website so that uh, then it will be available to all the students uh, of Assam. <clears throat> uh, this was another uh, uh, video we uh, curated more scales and uh, to represent um, the flood situations of Assam and the continuous, uh, you know, uh, changes brought by it, and uh, this was also submitted. Uh, this was also submitted to uh, the World Bank uh, during uh, 2019. The similar. Uh, 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 so, uh, so similar a uh, part of the similar project we uh, submitted the earlier. Uh, Uh, this video so and this is also in their archive uh wish i could take this nobanita is this also a video which is not playing it is also a video it's not okay uh, let me explain okay so yeah Sorry. Should we try running a, a separate video file? I mean, the main video file, not the one in the presentation. Is it? Uh, okay. Uh, okay, let me try. So, yeah, is it visible now? Okay. So, yeah, so this is the Morske yes, video yes. Uh, in, uh, again, World Bank uh, Art Gallery. So, we try to say uh, that uh, how uh, the flood situation is bringing, uh, you know, changes to the, the, to the landscape, to the demography, to our lives uh, in Assam. So this is just a, a couple of minutes video. And this is this two panel video uses both performance and then, you know, materials and uh, as a video panels also uh, as a combination of different uh, things. And uh, you can see how uh, this panel, the body was, uh, body got generated and how now the body is uh, getting formed in this panel. So this is a full cycle between the continuous, uh, the struggle and the continuous uh, struggle to uh, like uh, 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 revive the destruction and the destruction caused by the natural phenomena. So uh, the every year that process uh, happens uh, 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 continuously, and then the whole video. So it is getting generate degenerating. This is forming. This is getting degenerate uh, getting degenerated, and this is forming. So this is the complete cycle. And the materials used for this uh, project also it all goes back to the dust and the clay and everything that's available and then connected to the nature and then uh, yeah. So I thought uh, uh, considering the community uh, is present here. Uh, so uh, this is something I can communicate with you all. 
and the let's watch, the, watch this for another one minute. Oh. So yeah, this is uh, the whole tree and the whole scape is forming here. It's forming here. And then this, the whole person starts getting degenerated again. And uh, the scape here, it starts forming from this person. So yeah, uh, while making this video, uh, it was a different experience because we 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 three were there, uh, and uh, we all were from the uh, we all were from the same community from Assam. We experienced the flood. We have seen flood. We have seen the devastation. We have seen seen people's lives, and yeah, we we were really happy that we could come out with a, such a uh, artwork, and at the same time, it was. Uh, painful as well to uh, you know going uh, through the similar uh, process. Uh, yeah. So. So it was, uh, yeah, it was painful as well as I said it to, you know, curate those emotions that we were uh, experiencing from our childhood through some artwork. Yeah, it was painful, but it was, uh, it was a different experience as well. So with this, I'm concluding my talk for today. And thank you. Thank you, Dr. Nobinita. This is such an interesting talk and very refreshing uh, compared to the other climate science talks that we usually have. So it was really uh, different and very interesting. Thank you. So yeah, so um, so we have some time. We have five minutes. Uh, I would encourage the viewers to uh, just raise their hands and directly ask their questions. They can come on the video. I mean, they can. Switch on their videos also. Raj sir, are you raising the hand? Yeah. Okay, sir. Yeah, uh, Dr. Now, uh, Bora, thank you for your nice presentation. Uh, I have one doubt. In the previous slide, no, what is morphoscapes? That... Uh, okay. What is that actually? Uh, morph is that a continuous evolution. It's a two word. Okay. Mor yeah, it's a two word. The continuous evolution and the scape is like uh, skipping, uh, I mean, presenting the whole evolution in one picture, like landscape. Okay, okay, thank you. Because this is the first time I'm hearing this word morph scapes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a like uh, coining something new uh, because it is a art, as I said, like artistic initiatives and you have the freedom you can like uh yeah. coin something uh yeah. yeah okay thank you thank you yeah i Any think we need questions? more such uh, collaborations uh with the artists i mean it's between the scientists and the artists yes yes i i feel so this is i think high time because you know high time Yes, because if you if you consider heterogeneity, then uh, heterogeneous characteristics of a social community, then especially for a country like India, where you do not have the minimum basic science literacy, science literacy actually, you go to the community, they do not know. And and what happened most of the time, um, I mean, many times it happens that they follow some rituals, some you know traditions, some cultures, who is basically not directly but indirectly they promote some scientific hygiene or you know scientific uh, thoughts so we can use those with the help of some artists some communicators everybody and then we can use those and we can in use 
those staffs to increase the science literacy. So yeah, we do need collaboration. Yeah, and like you said, that there is more freedom of expression in art. So, um, I mean, even maybe scientists will understand better some of the things. Yes. Yes. Art. Yeah, it's a completely different one. Yes. So combining science and uh, art. Yes. So difficult. I mean, I can imagine how difficult this whole uh, process must must have been for you. The whole project to make the performers understand that what What do we want to show? Yes. Yes. It was. Are there fun. any questions from audience? Uh, Shiva, did you got any questions from audience? Um. No, sir. Okay. Yeah. If there are no questions, yeah, I'd like to come to the end session. Uh, yeah. So first of all, I'd like to thank uh, Dr. Navnita Bora for a wonderful talk and uh, for two part series. I think last last week she has talked about uh, communicating science and this week uh, communicating science, bridging the gap through performative arts. And I think these two talks are completely different from our regular climate science talks and it is a refreshing one. And I hope uh, the attenders, uh, the audience might have benefited uh, from this talk and how to communicate uh, science in a simplistic way, which can be uh, passed on to mass people. So thank you, Dr. Bora. And I would uh, like to th thank all the participants as well as the climate study staff, but, uh, Archie Smitha, Sheba, and uh, our head of the department, Professor Subimal Ghosh, for uh, supporting this endeavor. So I request all of you to switch on your camera just for a virtual photograph. Yes, please. Everyone, please switch on your cameras and smile also. Yeah. Yeah, and thank you. Thank you for giving me this opportunity because this uh, this kind of uh, you know research are not very uh, yeah common as of common. Yeah. And we do not have statistics. We do not have statistics to know what kind of uh, deniers we have. Uh, in the mm. previous session, we have a one question. Then, uh, yeah, we do not have any kind of statistics. We cannot say that. Is this some kind of belief we do keep believing that we do not have science or climate change deniers or, and all? But yeah, if you look for statistics, we do not know what is the percentage they uh, they believes climate change. What is the percentage do not believe climate change? No, or, like, yeah. Mm. Yeah. So I will take this opportunity to invite all of you to the next uh, seminar, which is scheduled on 15th December, which will be uh, dealing about socioeconomic implications due to climate change, migration issues due to climate change and these hazards. So I thank you one and all and uh, have a good day and good evening. See yeah. you in the next seminar. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Bora. Thank you Thanks. so much. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Bye. It was very depressing as mentioned by everyone. So after a long day with a lot of you know meetings, admin meetings, scientific meetings, equations and everything, when you you know hear this kind of lectures, which is this is very refreshing. Thank you. Thanks for the virtual tea, yeah? Sir? <laughs> very herbal <hard> tea. <laughs> yeah, 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 definitely. Yeah, it's a herbal tea, but again, <laughs> it is not uh, I mean uh, like uh, uh very different from the the equations you mentioned because whatever whatever we are doing it's based on the equations you were solving so you took all of us very close to soil and ground yes you know to the common people from the urban area that is the take home and benefit from all of us and we have to learn a lot <laughs> yes yeah thank you very good excellent <laughs> thank, thank you, you so much thank you thank you all Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Okay, everyone. Thanks, 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 Raj, for attending. Thanks, Sir Shiva and everyone. Yeah, thank you, Sir. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Shiva, I'm just ending. Uh, leave the meeting. Huh? I'm not ending. Sir, we can't leave. Shiva will end the meeting. Yeah, yeah. Nobody. Yeah.